and gentlemen, I find myself in a very peculiar position, one that is uh, unique to me. I uh, am talking today uh, to an audience that has not yet been called. There are many things that you know that are hidden from me. You know, for example, what I should like to know, the result of uh, the timeless test match. You may even be able to know whether, as you listen, it has stopped raining. One is tempted to repeat, if one had the eloquence of Hamlet, something of his apostrophe to the wonders of man. What a marvellous age we live in. I remember my father, who was born in 1848 and died in 1913, telling us when we were children that we should never, no matter what we might see in the world, see such marvels as he himself had seen. He had seen the coming of the railway. He had seen the beginnings of the telephone and the telegraph. He had even ridden in the first motor cars. And great as those changes were, great changes so great that he himself couldn't imagine greater. Since those years, we have seen the aeroplane with all its vast effects upon our civilization, the cinematograph, that enormous power in the lives and amusements of the people, broadcasting, and now within the last few years, the great power of the talking. Now what we have to consider is what we are going to do with all these powers and inventions. Whether we are going to allow them to be our servants and not our masters. In the concluding passage of that great book, G. M. Trevelyan's History of England, he lays it down as his summary of the situation, that man's power over nature has now far outstripped his mental and moral development. That is the issue before us, whether we are going to keep pace in our mental and moral development with the inventive genius of man whether we're going to make a right use of these powers that are before us. When one thinks of that which, which I am surrounded now, all the wonders of the cinematograph and the talking, one sees a new power, an unproved power, with enormous potentialities, and it depends upon the teaching world, the world that goes to hear and to see, to all thoughtful people, the use that the modern civilization is going to make of the means that man's invention has placed at their disposal. <laughs>